Righto, so let's get into it. Let's talk about the giveaway. Some lucky person is going to win a copy of the STLs. All you need to do is be the first person to put in the comments how you know that I didn't use uh, the original G-codes and that I sliced the STLs with my own profile. So first person, correct answer. I'm judge, juror, executioner. I'll decide who wins and which answers are correct and which ones are not. Anyway, let's move right along. So a couple of people have asked how uh, we can mold that rear hatch. So basically get yourself a heat proof dish, uh, put some boiling hot water in it. No Lockie, we're not making coffee. Focus. We want to have our uh, rear fuselage part nearby and just get that uh, part, drop it in. The boiling hot water will soften it up. You're gonna want like a pair of tongs to fish it out because it's yeah, boiling hot water. And all you need to do is get it out, put it over the fuselage and basically mold it to that shape. Just make sure you run your fingers up and down those long edges a couple of times. Um, otherwise they will probably get a little bit of a warp to them. Um, but just doing that, just make sure you get a nice straight uh, line on them. And it only takes about 30 seconds, that'll cool off, it'll go hard again, uh, and you'll be right to go. So that one's pretty much done. If you make a mistake or don't like it, just drop it back in the hot water again. But as you can see, that's now got you know a nice bit of a curve to it. So recently I mounted my motor uh, in the fuselage. Um, I have a separate video on mounting the motor to the actual firewall for it. Um, there are bits that go in front and behind it to give it a bit more strength. Um, I found that the piece in the front, I needed to put a little bit of an angle on it, basically because of where it was gonna sit within the fuselage. Um, you can probably kind of see on that guy, down that outside edge that there's a little bit of an angle to it. Um, and that was the angle that I was required um, just because there was a little bit of an angle inside the fuselage where the mount was, where that piece was gonna sit for the motor. Basically the way I did that was I imported uh, fuselage part one, um, this part as well as the motor mount into Fusion 360 uh, and I used the uh, split body function. So basically I took uh, this part and I used the fuselage as the tool to do a split body, which then took away uh, any overlapping areas from this part that it had with the fuselage. So I ended up with a really nice, really nice fit, really good fit too. So I then glued that in. Uh, I then glued in um, the motor mount, and I then glued in the original um, part from the front, which is actually larger. So that's the front one, and that's the normal rear one. There's not a lot going on behind the motor, um, but seeing it already printed the front one, um, and I still had it, I just yeah, glued it in instead. Righto, so that's the motor. So for the undercarriage, uh, I finally got around to cleaning up uh, these long um, bolts that were sticking out. Um, a couple of things to be careful of. Make sure that you don't damage the nylon and the nylock nuts because then they won't be very effective. Another thing is be careful how much heat that you put into the bolts when you're using something like a Dremel to cut them off. Uh, for this shock here, um, I don't know whether you can see it, some of it's actually melted because it got a little bit too hot. So I'll replace, you know, that body bit that's like a 10 minute print and yeah, a couple of minutes to swap it out. But apart from that, um, yeah, it's looking really good. Something to be mindful of when you bolt this into the fuselage, because um, it's unlikely that you put uh, nylock nuts in there. Make sure that you drop a little bit of Loctite or something on there, just um, so that those nuts don't work themselves loose. One difference between the version that I've printed uh, and the current version is how the servos fit into the rear fuselage uh, for the rudder and elevator. 
Um, in my version, it uses a 3D printed uh, servo mount, which is then glued inside the fuselage. In the latest version, um, there are recesses in the fuselage um, for those servos to sit in. Right on, onto the wing. So, I did previously do a video on the slats, but I didn't like it, so I haven't published it. Um, I'll talk you through what I do um, to install the slats. It's pretty straightforward. Um, just remember to do your test bits um, before you glue anything. So the first thing you need to do is make sure that this PLL component uh, along the edge here has been glued in. Once that's glued in, there's then a teardrop shape uh, that gets glued into it and it's got two little locating lugs on it. So um, that's a fairly simple job. Before you glue it in, test fit it into um, the slat because the slat slips over it. So once you've test fitted that, glued it, what I then do is I get my slat and I will glue it in this end, but I will also just dry fit the PLA former on this end of the wing so that I know this is nice and straight and it's not gonna be you know, a bit wonky. Once this end is dry, I then take the little spacers, uh, put a little bit of glue on them, and um, after doing a test bit of course, and then I just slide them up inside there um, and wait for that to dry, I do both of those. Once that's done, you can then just glue this end on um, and that's good to go. In relation to the servos, the servos actually have a little servo tray, which is printed in two parts, there's a top and a bottom. The top actually has a recess for the bottom to sit in so that when you glue it together, it's a nice strong bond and it's not gonna slip around during the gluing stage, so it's gonna line up perfectly. Basically what you do is once that's glued in, you drop your servo in, there's a little plate that's screwed in over the top that then holds that servo in place. Uh, it's really worthwhile making sure that whatever screws you're gonna use, that these screw holes are correct before you mount it in the wing um, because it'll just make the whole thing a bit easier. With mine, um, I know what screws I'm gonna use and I've already um, made sure that the holes are clean enough and I've done a test fit of all the screws so that that's good to go. Another thing to be mindful of is the orientation. Um, when you look at where the horn will be on the servo, you need to make sure that it is going to line up with where the horn is on the surface. If you glue this in the wrong way, it's going to be out by, that's an inch and a half-ish. So that's just not going to work. So make sure you get your orientation right. Um, it's advisable to have um, the ailerons and flaps installed when you're doing this, because that way you can just eyeball it straight away and there's no guessing or maths or anything like that. You just know where it needs to be. So these basically, you drop your cable in and you drop this guy in and you just glue him in and he's done. Um, in relation to my leads when they come out, my plan is to have one of them female and one of them male so that I never get those cables backwards when I connect the wing up. You know, there'd be nothing worse than taking off and all of a sudden, you know, the, the, the flaps moving around lots, but the ailerons really doing nothing because you've got those two channels mixed up. In relation to uh, cutting the hole, so the, the the mounting slots for the ailerons and flaps um, are well defined. Um, you just need to cut out that little inner uh, rectangle. It's quite easy to do with a blade. You don't need anything like a Dremel. Um, and once again, it's just a matter of take your time, don't rush it, and just cut out that little rectangle bit and then do a test fit. If you need to take a little bit more off, take a little bit more off. And it's literally about a minute per slot.
anyone who's trying to figure out the answer to the question which wins you a copy of the uh, files, uh, you can potentially see it in this shot here. It should show you what the answer is. And I know a lot of people, once they find out what the answer is, they're going to be like, man, that was so obvious. Why didn't I pick up on that? But, you know, it's one of those things. So don't, don't feel bad if you don't get it. Oh, no, we're getting there. So, yeah, once again, take your time. There's no rush. Done. And then you know that aileron. I want to test. Uh, sorry, that servo. I just want to test fit that. That's actually a really good fit. I actually did a good job on that one. First go. Normally I find I have to shave a little bit off. Um, yeah. So once again, make sure your orientation's correct. Um, yeah, and make sure that uh, if you need to extend your leads, that you've done that because it's a little bit hard when it's inside the wing. Righto, so let's pop that out. There's not much left to be done on the wing once you're at that point. Come on. You went in easy. So once you've done your servos, um, there's you can do something like you can throw that on if you want. So I just printed that in transparent PLA. I was going to put a, an LED in there so it lit up, but yeah, I kind of got to the point where I just want to get this thing flying. So yeah, I've just got clears on there, made out of transparent PLA. So the other thing you need to do is you need to obviously attach um, your flaps and your ailerons. It's quite simple to do. I just kind of start it off in the flap and then I roughly align it with its hinge points. I get it through to there. I grab my aileron, I just back it up a bit, line it up all the way through. And when I get to the end here, I eyeball through this gap and I can see that it hasn't gone all the way through. There's another three quarters of an inch there for it to travel. So what I generally do is I just hold the aileron in its position and I rotate it. There we go, that's gone into the PLA bit. And then there's another, another three quarters of an inch. And that's kind of important because you don't actually glue this carbon fiber rod to anything. The way that it stays in place is that when you install the wing, the fuselage is stopping that from coming out. So this would be below where it is now. I obviously can't put it any lower, but the fuselage will, will stop that from coming out. One of the great things about that is if you did damage, you know, a flap, an aileron, the control horn even, um, you can take the wing off. There'd be a little bit uh, sticking out because you want to cut it off even with this PLA part. There'd be a little bit sticking out, you grab it with a pair of pliers and you can then pull that rod out and do whatever maintenance you need to do. So once you get to that point with the wing, uh, there's only a couple of little detail bits to put on. So these three guys just need to be glued on. I leave these to last because in a lot of these other processes you're often flipping the wing over and doing things like that. and. Especially this guy here, he'd probably get knocked off if you're not careful. Um, yeah, so glue those three on, your wing's good to go. All right, so uh, good luck with the question. As I said, first person to answer it correctly, when to copy the STLs. Good luck with it.